With that being said, let's stand and invite God to be a part of our time together. And then you can sit down and we'll go over some announcements. Uh, let's pray. God, I thank you so much um, that you're with us and that nothing can take us away from your hand. Lord, I am just so thankful for this church and for her people. I just pray, God, that you would be with us now as we enter into this time together. Uh, this moment, Lord, where we um, hear your word spoken, we sing these songs of worship to you. Um, Lord, I'm just thankful for this moment. I pray that all that we do, all that we say, would bring glory and honor to your name. Lord, we pray all these things, trusting in you, hoping in you. God, we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As far as announcements go, um, if you like that song, um, we were singing out of Our Great Redeemer's Praise, which is a new hymnal that's just been put out by Seedbed. And it is uh, an exhaustive list of Wesleyan um, hymns from all the different denominations, the Wesleyan denominations. They also went back and put the right words in the songs. Um, the Methodist hymnal, although it's, it's good, they changed the wording to be more inclusive and, and, and other things, which, which I, don't, I don't care for too much. But anyway, this has gone back to do that. And so my hope is that we are going to change out the old United Methodist hymnals and, and buy some of these. Um, they're $30 a piece. If you're interested, I, if I can get 20 people um, to come together, I can buy a box, and that makes them $30 a piece. So if you're interested in getting a hymnal, my thought is if we all buy a hymnal, we could stick it in the pew, and we'd have plenty for everybody to use. So um, I was excited that we sang that song out of that day. As far as announcements go, you see the insert that we have there. Um, big things coming up, Vacation Bible School. Really excited. If you did not get to come to the meeting about Vacation Bible School, Holly Ann shared a video and I think it's going to be really, really good this year. So if you would like to help, you're unable to come to the meeting, please see Holly in afterwards so she can get your name and put you down. You sure can. You want to say something about the uh, back to school?
Quick kids. No, that's good. We got a lot. There's a lot of need there for those two events. Um, and I'll say the back to school bash, we do it with other churches. And I've had some other churches who want to be a part of it, um, too. So I hope that you'll come be a part of those things. There's other information in the bulletin um, about that uh, particular that's coming up. Um, the card ministry information, uh, Methodist Women's about M uh, Mother's Day recognition. Please look at that. Also, senior recognition is May the 21st. Uh, Ms. Ruckel's not here today, but if you uh, have a senior or know of a senior that's a part of our church, um, she's got a list of names, but please reach out to her and make sure she has the name that you've got um, because we don't want to leave anybody out um, for our senior recognition uh, Sunday, again, which is May the 21st. And then finally, I want to lift up, um, we're going to have line dancing with Jesus. Um, I think that's probably a thing. I don't know. Um, but that is not going to start until May the 8th. So please make a note of that. Uh, May the 8th. Um, I will tell you that, uh, biblically speaking, at weddings, there was line dancing. Not the line dancing we see today, but, but there would be dancing and having fun. And, and, it, and I have to believe Jesus did that. Um, and, and he had fun. And, and so there's going to be a devotion in, in this uh, class as well. Um, so you'll get to kind of learn some line dancing and then have a devotion, and we're excited about this. More information will be coming out for the bulletin, but please know it starts May the 8th. I think there was an idea that it might be starting tomorrow. It's not. Um, or May the 8th, so put that uh, in your calendar if you're interested. A um, lot going on, a lot that we wanna, want you to be aware of. With that being said, Ms. Carlin, come and lead us with our opening Right. Good morning. Our opening hymn is page 369 in your book, or either it'll be on the screen. It's Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. And my prayer for us this morning is that for whatever reason, if you're not, if you don't have that assurance in your heart that you belong to Jesus, you know, don't put it off. Today's a great day to do that. And we've got some great words you can hear through the word that's going to be preached. And some of the songs that are sung, so let's all stand and sing Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance.
as we come to the Lord this morning for prayer, um, I want you to remember um, Lori McCalvin's granddaughter. Um, tell me her name again. Evie Jo. Um, she has, they think, some neurological disorder. Is that the right way to say it? She's got a gene that's missing, and they found that out in her DNA, which could lead to some issues. So she's going to be having some different tests and things done. In any light, please keep her in your prayers, along with her other grandchild, Wilder, who is recovering from um, a, a crack in his skull, and he's dealing with um, headaches from the concussion, which is normal. Um, but please pray for him as well with these headaches that he's dealing with. Um, we've got other folks who are dealing with different things. We had a large... Uh, group we were praying for this morning. Um, we're going to be praying for them this evening at 5.30 in the chapel. We had a, uh, about five people last week, but it was just a sweet time. And then the youth joined us um, when they were done doing their thing, and they came in and prayed with us. And it was just a powerful time. I hope that you'll come. I want you to know a couple things. Number one, if you come, please know we're not going to call on you to pray. I don't want people to feel like well, I'm not used to praying in front of folks, and I don't want to be called on to pray. Well, we're not going to call on you. You pray if you want to pray, um, but nobody is going to make you pray. So please just come and be a part of the time. If you got something going on in your life and you want us to be sharing uh, in prayer for that, then come and, and, and let us know, and we'll pray for you. Um, this is a time uh, just to pray over our church, pray over one another, and just thank God for what he's doing. So in light of our time now to go to the Lord in prayer, I hope you'll come and and be a part of that time at 5.30 um, together. And the youth are going through, uh, they're, they're talking about prayer now on Sundays as well. So I want parents to know next um, Sunday is 5th Sunday. And so the youth are going to have a movie night starting at 4.30. Um, they'll have popcorn and drinks to go with that. And they're going to be watching the movie War Room, which is about prayer. Um, so kind of to go in line. And then the next week, Miss Lori will have... Uh, uh, kind of a, some stuff to ask you about it. So there's going to be homework. Uh, so uh, come and, 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 and learn and know that and be a part of that stuff together. Um, so a lot of stuff going on. I hope that you're praying for your church. I hope that the VBS is on your prayer list. I hope the, the back to school bash is on your prayer list. I, I hope all these things that you hear are going on in the life of the church are things that you are praying about. Uh, because we need to lift these things up in prayer um, as we do people who are in need physically, mentally, and spiritually. Let's have a moment of silence as we gather our thoughts, and I will lead us in our morning prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this morning I'm so thankful for the blessed assurance that we have. Uh, the blessed assurance that nothing can take you away from us, that we are yours, and Lord, I'm just so thankful for the fact that when we go through uncertain moments, um, when the doctor says things that we're not quite sure what that means, um, when the doctor gives us information, even if it may be terminal, um, all these things, Lord, that we deal with, from, from, from doctors to um, just work to, to our family issues, to, to whatever it is. Lord, you're there and you're with us and you're going through it with us. And I'm so thankful for that truth today. Lord, I just pray right now that you would hold us close to your side, that you would remind us of your presence that is always with us. And Lord, when we go through difficult moments or when we're just going through life's moments, that we will hold tight to your hand. Lord, we see uh, the news and we hear what's going on in Sudan and other places. 16,000 Americans um, trapped in that country. Um, not to mention the pain and the suffering that Sudanese people are going through in the midst of this conflict. Lord, I pray for them today. I just pray that you'd protect them. I pray that you'd solve this um, thing that's going on with, with limited loss of life. And God, that you would just be very real in the hearts and lives of Christians so they can bear witness to the light of who you are, even in the midst of such difficult moments. Lord, we see other things going on around the world, and I just pray that all of us as your children here in this little community of, of Lee County and Leesburg would, would just fall on our knees for a global movement of God, a global movement that would, would, would move across and sweep us up in it, Lord, as we see your hand working. 
Lord, we just love you today, and we are so thankful for your spirit, your presence that walks with us in this life. Lord, again, may all we do and say in these moments bring glory and honor to your name as we lift you up. We love you, Father. We thank you for your love for us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. All right. Our next um, song, it's not really him, I guess, is He is Lord. It's very short. It's like a, you know, you, you know it. He is Lord. He is Lord. He's risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Um, it tells us that every knee sh shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Um, and that scripture, it, it doesn't, I, when I read it in scripture, it seems like it's saying it more, you know, with a little more. Mm. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. You know, it's going to happen, you know, so we can, to me, I think it's easier. <laughs> Let's do it here, you know, instead of one wet day, part of those people that are forced to do that because that's going to happen. So let's sing. It's short, and, uh, but we'll sing it twice. Let's stand. Father, we thank you, God, that you are indeed Lord and you are in control. And Father, we see that control and we see your hand at work in our lives and the way that you provide for us. And God, you provide for us as people and families. But Lord, you have provided for this church in so many different ways. It amazes me when a need arises how you provide just what we need. You do that in many different ways. And a lot of times, mostly, you do it through the generosity of your people. And I'm thankful for the generosity of the Leesburg folks today. Lord, I pray that you would take these gifts, these offerings, and use them for your kingdom's work. We love you, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And as you're taking offering, I want to tell you the offering, the altar is open for you to come and pray during the offertory if you feel led to do so.
So we're going to continue on our sermon series on the Great Commission. Um, it's important stuff. Um, and sometimes I think we look at it as, well, we're supposed to go and, and tell people about Jesus. Well, that's part of it, but that's not all of it. Um, so much, and, and as I've been studying this week, it, it's really kind of hit home um, what this is all about and how it's transformative and, and how this is kind of the beginning or the mark of who we are as children of God. So let's look at it. Matthew 28. Uh, today we're going to be looking at verse 19 and 20 of Matthew and then Mark 16, 6. So let's look at it. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I command you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now let's turn to Mark 16. And 16, I think that connects. So Mark 16, verses 15 and 16. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved. But he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. So we have these two thoughts. First, last week we talked about going, right? God commands us to go. So this command is for people who are believers. People who have asked Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of their life. We need to start with that idea. The disciples, Jesus said, follow me. They did. They followed him. And for three years, they were discipled by him. And now it's time for them to go out and do what he's called them to do. So he is speaking to those of us who have asked Jesus to be Lord and Saviors of our lives. We are called to go out and share the message of Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He has given us a way back to him through Christ's sacrifice. Our sins are forgiven. The penalty we should have paid, we do not have to pay because Jesus paid it for us. Um, he is Lord. We surrender to him and we follow after him. The gospel of salvation. Last week we talked about this. Go Share, preach the gospel. So then what happens after that? Well, today we have this idea of baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So baptizing. Let's see what this is all about. I've got an excerpt from a commentary that I want to share with you because it's important. It kind of highlights what this is all about. Everyone, even as one is called from among the nations to begin life as a disciple... One must, in turn, follow the Lord through baptism and through obedience to Jesus' teachings. A per, as a person responds to the invitation to believe in Jesus, she or he is regenerated to start life as a disciple. The participle baptizing describes the activity by which a new disciple identifies with Jesus and his community. And the participle teaching introduces the activities by which the new disciple grows in discipleship. So, in essence... When we are baptized, we come out of the water with this image of a new creation. A new creation that is connected to a family of faith. So baptism does not save us, right? We know this for a lot of different reasons. But one wonderful example is the thief on the cross. Did Jesus look at the thief on the cross and say, Today after you're baptized... No, he doesn't say that. When would the guy have time to do that, right? No, it, it, baptism does not save you. So if you're here and you've always wondered, I was never baptized, I, I'm not a Christian. Being baptized does not make you a Christian. But baptism is important. Baptism is a sign to the world. The Bible says, I am unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Right? When I get baptized, in essence, I'm saying to the world, this is who I am. I am a new creation in Christ. 
Um, how many of you have ever seen a dragonfly nymph? Has anybody seen a dragonfly nymph? Um, if you haven't, I will tell you, if a dragonfly nymph was 350 pounds and six foot long, nobody would go swimming in the, in the water. You wouldn't. Because if you see these little things, they're like tigers, man. They've got this thing that comes out and grabs a hold of, of its supper, and they're vicious little insects. But that little dragonfly nymph stays in the water for a time, and then it will come up, and it will harden, and then when it hatches out, it's a dragonfly. And it flies like a little helicopter tiger in the air, right? And it takes out flies and mosquitoes and all sorts of things. But it is a new creation when it comes out of the water. And in a very real way, what we're saying in baptism is I am a new creation. I'm acknowledging what God has done by saving me and transforming me. And in my surrender to him, I am brand new. Now, we need to understand the difference between the way Old Testament held baptism and the way Jesus holds baptism. So again, I want to go to the commentary and read this information because it's important. Purity washings were common among various sects in Israel, either for entrance to the temple or for daily rituals. Proselyte baptism increasingly indicated conversion from paganism to Judaism. At first, Jesus and John carried out baptism side by side, marking the arrival of the kingdom, John 3, 22, and John, through John 4, 3, kind of talks about this. But with the initiation of the new covenant through Jesus' death and resurrection, and at the arrival of the Spirit, Jesus' form of baptism is unique. It is the symbol of conversion, indicating a union and a new identity in Jesus, Messiah, who has died and been raised to new life. In the act of baptism, the new disciple identifies with Jesus in his community of faith and gives public declaration that she or he has become a lifelong follower of Jesus. Baptism, then, is a ceremony of entry into the family of God. So that's why, as Methodists, we baptize infants, right? We do not think that a child that is baptized is saved because of that baptism. But we recognize the grace of God that covers that child until it reaches the age of accountability. Biblically, there's no set age of accountability. It's just when a child understands what the gospel means in a sense. Ben right now knows that Jesus died on the cross from his, for his sins. He's heard that from me. He's heard that from Miss Carlin and from Holly Ann and others who have taught him. And to the best of his understanding, he has accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. But when he gets old enough to completely understand what that means, he will be held accountable for it. And in that moment, he accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior. And so infant baptism is just recognizing the grace of God that is on that child because we don't believe children go to hell. Babies who pass away do not go to hell. Um, Children who have to deal with um, different disorders um, where their mind's not fully developed, I believe God holds them to their understanding and how they can understand. That's all the grace of God. And we acknowledge that in infant baptism because it is something that God does. Now, parents stand up in this moment, and we're going to have some baptisms on May the 28th. Looking forward to that. But mom and dad are going to stand up here, and they're going to say, we believe. They're going to say, we are held accountable. Because they're held accountable for their children's faith. Because they are growing, their children are growing, and they're going to see mom and dad's faith. Just like your grandchildren see your faith, grandparents. Parents, your children see your faith. It is matters. And so when they reach that age of accountability, they'll be able to accept Christ as Lord and Savior for themselves or reject it. But baptism does not save. So Paul explicitly links baptism to what the living God has accomplished in Jesus' resurrection. Baptism marks the profound truth that with the new covenant, all new disciples are brought into a new existence that is fundamentally determined by God. So whether by infant baptism or adult baptism, believers have a moment where God does something in their life and they 
are declaring, whether it's the parents with their children or whether it's a baptism of a believer, that they belong to him and they are indeed new creations in him. So we go and we share the gospel of Jesus Christ. When someone accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life, the next step in that journey for them is a public profession of that faith through baptism if they've never been baptized. Now, we don't force people to do that, but it is a mark of faith. If you've seen the Jesus Revolution, one of the cool things about that movie is when they are baptizing people in the ocean. I mean, there are droves of people who accepted Jesus, and when they go underwater and come back up, there's just something that God does. It's a powerful moment. I can remember as a child being baptized um, in the Nazarene baptismal and, and being brought up out of that water and this sense of newness. And I won't tell you that my life changed completely because I don't really think I gave my life to Christ until I was um, 18. But that moment at 12 years old or however I was when I got baptized, I never stopped thinking about God from that moment on. Even when I was disobeying him, he was always a thought in my head. This is a moment, friends. This, this is an important moment. So I would challenge you today. If you've never been baptized, come see me. Let's do this. Let's, let's give you this public profession so you can tell the world, I'm a believer. This is my profession to you as the congregation of my church family that this is what I believe. If you have friends that you're talking to about Jesus and they've never been baptized, no matter what church they go to, encourage them to go and get baptized. Tell their preacher wherever they go, hey, do this. This is a step that Jesus actually commands us to do. Please remind them this does not mean they're, you know, if you haven't accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, if you get baptized, that doesn't do anything, right? Salvation comes before baptism. But baptism is a mark of what we're called to do as believers of God. So we're called to tell people to go and get baptized. And then he says in verse 20, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the age. Teaching them, that word there, them, is everyone. Matthew is writing to the Jewish folks. But it's not just the Jewish folks. It's all people who need to know Jesus. So we share the good news. Uh, believers who have been transformed by the grace of God um, go to baptism and, and they're baptized and they come up marked. And so many times in churches, friends, we leave people there. We just leave them in that moment. But that's not what we're called to do. We're called to disciple them. Who is he talking to in this moment? Just preachers? Just Sunday school teachers? Everybody. So who's called to be a disciple maker? Everybody raise your hand. Everybody. That's right. You see, this idea that Jesus came up with, the power of multiplication is important. If you have one believer who talks to two believers who talks to two believers, and it keeps on going, and then they begin to disciple these folks, what in the world would happen if every single one of you began to disciple one or two people? Would you add to the kingdom of God men and women who know Jesus? You see, Jesus took three years to disciple his disciples before he ever threw them out in the water. So many times people come to know Jesus, we get them baptized, and we pat ourselves on the back because they baptized, and now we can count them as a profession of faith. So what? If we don't disciple them, what in the world good is, is it going to be for the kingdom of God? You have got to grow people. Share the good news. Share the gospel over and over. Tell them about different things and what those things mean. So that they, in return, know the story, know what our belief and our faith is, so they can share it and be disciple makers as well. I said this at the early service. How many of you would plant a seed and never tend to it? Like you purposely plant a seed and then you never do anything else to tend to it. That's not smart farming, is it? Why in the world would we hold that same standard 
with making disciples for Jesus Christ. Planting seeds and then seeing those seeds grow. And when you do things like teach Sunday school, when you do things like take other opportunities, you are becoming a discipler. Some people do it in other ministries. Some people do it with, with Sunday school class. Right now your children are being discipled. How about that? They're in there learning about Jesus. That's good. If your children are in here, hopefully they're being discipled. But they need to understand, right? So parents, I would encourage you when you leave church on your way home, talk about what we talked about today. See if your children have any questions. See if they were listening. See what they might come up with so that you can begin to pour into them watering and fertilizing the seeds that have been made. So Jesus says to go and teach, and, and, and he calls us to teach. But how can you teach if you don't know it yourself, right? If you're not studying God's word, if you're not being discipled, growing, then how can you do that for others? I saw this firsthand in campus outreach when I was in college. I had been a Christian for a while. Uh, my dad was a preacher's, you know, and I was a pre my dad was a preacher's kid. I was a preacher's kid. And, and so I knew enough about the Bible to get in trouble, right? But I needed to know how to share my faith. And I needed to know what to do. And so when I went to college, I became a part of Campus Outreach. And Campus Outreach just didn't throw me into being a disciple maker. I was a disciple for a year. And then after that, I started my own discipleship group. I went down to, Epworth by the, um, to, Saint, to Fernadina with Campus Outreach. And then after I was done with Campus Outreach, I, I went and was a part of Epworth by the Sea. Became a head counselor. Then I became a head counselor. Then I became a youth director when I graduated from college. I was a youth director for nine years with a pastor who was my boss. And he dis they discipled me in different ways. And then once I got out of the youth ministry, I became a pastor. And I became the shepherd for the first time. They didn't throw me at Vineville as the pastor of Vineville, the, one of the bigger churches in, in the South Georgia Conference. They put me at Plains and Preston where I learned how to be a shepherd. And then they sent me to you. And for the last 10 years, I've learned how to be a shepherd even more. Friends, we're not saying today that you have to jump right in and know how to do everything. But we are saying we're all at different places. And maybe you're here today and you can start a discipleship group with some men or some women. women. Maybe you've got some people already that you are a part of. And maybe it's, you're growing in discipleship together point is you need to be doing something whether it's be discipled yourself so that you in return down the road can be a discipler or whether it's to start doing what God has called us to do and teaching and sharing there's something for all of us to do friends and the point of this is not just knowing but actually being obedience in the early church was the mark of a believer of Jesus Christ to hear a command that Jesus gave. A lot of these disciples heard Jesus give commands. And they were obedient to those commands. And they shared them with the people that they discipled. Some of them never saw Jesus face to face. But they heard the disciples and were taught by the disciples. Some were a long list of people who heard what they heard. What they heard from the disciples. And through faith they followed the teachings of Jesus. We have his word. We have what was taught. And it's time for us to share the good news. I want to say something, friends. Why does this matter? Because we have been called to go out into the world and to share the gospel. Why is that important? Because there are people who have never heard the good news. Now, we had a conversation Friday. Um, we had to take some stuff to Krista's uh, mama's work that we had found at the house and, and get some stuff where, from her office where she was. And we began to talk to someone there and, 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 and they were telling us about kind of their idea of what faith was. And, and they thought that people who, who had never heard the gospel would not be held accountable for it and, and, and maybe they would get to heaven if they, if they were another faith. And, and I'm trying to be good about not just condemning people right off the bat because I don't want to cease the conversation, right? 
So I listened, and I was like, well, that's, you know, I don't know what happens to people who have never heard the gospel. I think they're in God's hands, right? If you've never heard the gospel, and you're in some far-off place in the middle of the jungle, you know, the, the Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God. Um, that's between you and God. And when you die and, and go to, it, it, you're in his hands, and I trust whatever God does with that. But what I know for certain is, if you've heard the gospel, you're accounted you're accountable to it. If you've heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, whether you accept it or reject it, you're accountable to it. And we had this box, and I looked at him and I said, you know, we, we brought you this box with, with stuff in it. And I said, we don't know what it is, and you don't really know what it is. You can take that box and you can do nothing with it. Just leave it there. But I suspect you're going to want to dig in it and see what's in there, aren't you? And he said, yeah, I am. And I said, that's because you're accountable to it. So when you go and you look in that box, whatever's in there, you're going to be accountable for it. If it's stuff that you need to keep, you'll keep it. If it's stuff you need to throw away, you'll throw away. But you're diving in, looking at it. When somebody shares the gospel, you are accountable to it, whether you accept it or not. The rich young ruler, Jesus comes. He talks to Jesus. He says, this is what you got to do. The guy says, I can't do that. He walks away sorrowful. He will be held accountable on judgment day for rejecting the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know this because that's what God's word says. We just read it. Right? And Mark, today, if you've heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, if you've heard the story of what Jesus has done, and you reject it, you will be held accountable for it. I know there's a lot of other different religions. There's a lot of, a lot of different stuff to say a lot of different things. But the gospel of Jesus Christ is by itself, and it's solid. And today, friends, we're accountable for it. And what's more is our call is to go out into the world and share it with others. So that there is none that say, nobody told me. Nobody told me about Jesus. And what's more, guys, we can't take for granted that people just know. There was a day in America where we could take for granted and say everybody's heard about the faith. Right? Children know the stories about Jesus. No, they don't. Not now. People don't, uh, children haven't heard the stories of Noah. Dan. And that stuff is being lost. Because our world is shutting it out. So today, this is our challenge. If you're here today and you've never been baptized, I want to encourage you to get baptized. We can set that up. We can do it. If you're here today and you've never been discipled, there are men and women here that would love to be a part of that process for you. They would love to take time with you to share. If you're here today and you know the truth of the gospel and maybe you've been discipled or you feel like you could be someone that is a discipler, maybe it's time for you to step out Find somebody that you can pour your life into. Whether it's people you work with, whether it's members of your family, I don't know. But the truth of the Great Commission is not just for his disciples, it's for all of us. And it's time. So what does this make us? Well, it makes us nobodies, right? What do I mean by that? Friends, the closing song is called Nobody. Maybe you've heard it on the radio. I'm just a nobody trying to tell somebody, right, about Jesus. That's who we are called to be. We go under the radar. We try to do all the good we can while we can. Friends, it is time. If each one of us had the ability to share the good news with two or three people and disciple those people, how would that transform our church? How would that transform Leesburg? How would that transform Lee County? Ultimately, how would it transform our world? It would transform in a very big way, wouldn't it? So, I'm going to pray for us. The altar's open if you need to come and pray or talk about anything. Maybe you know this song. Sing it with them. 
Maybe you don't know it. Listen to the words. This, I think, is the heartbeat of who we are and the calling that we have in our lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to the conclusion of our time, I pray that you would be with us now as we sing this final song. Lord, we are all people who've been called to share the good news. We are all people who've been called to be baptized and declare to the world who we are. We are not ashamed that we are your children. And Father, you've called us all to be disciples of men and women, to see them grow in their faith so they can in return go and tell others. This is who we are. Encourage us, Lord. Motivate us to get out and share the good news. We love you, Father. In your precious name we pray. Amen. So, everybody stand, if you would. And I just wanted to share this scripture with you. Isaiah 55, 12 says, You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. And so this song requires y'all to participate, whether you know it or not, <laughs> um, because this has a lot of clapping in it. So let's all practice. All right, and Matt's going to lead you with a clap. They're, they're going to um, one thing. Yeah, they're not going to clap because they're holding their mic. So y'all have to clap because they're not going to do it. So. <laughs> Why you ever chose me has always been a mystery. All my life I've been told I belong at the end of the line with all the other not quites, with all who never get it right. But it turns out they're the ones you were looking for all this time. Cause I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody. All about somebody who saved my soul. Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. Love said stage fright, and David brought a rock to a sword fight. You picked 12 outsiders nobody would have chosen And you changed the world Well, the moral of the story is Everybody's got a purpose So when I hear that devil start talking to me Saying, who do you think you are? I say I'm a nobody Trying to tell everybody All about somebody To save my soul you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. So let me go down, down, down in history as another blood bought faithful member of the if they all forget my name, well, that's fine with me. Living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. So let me go down, down, down in history. As another blood-bought, faithful member of the family. And if they all forget my name, well, that's fine with me. For the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm just a nobody I'm Trying to tell everybody All about somebody Who saved my soul Who saved my soul Who saved my soul
pretty good song. Y'all did good on that for your first go around. That's good. Um, nobody but Jesus. All right, so we've got the kind of setup of the gospel, what we're called to do. Next week, we're going to finish up with what that looks like and what happens when that begins to take place. When we begin to live in the Spirit of God, there are going to be signs, friends. And I want those signs to be seen in the life of our church. So please come back next week as we look about what, what that's all about. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all your blessings. I thank you for everything that you do in our hearts and lives. I'm thankful for today um, and all that's going on. We've got Gospel Project at 3.30 and youth, uh, middle school youth at, at 4.30 and, and then high school youth at 5.30. And, and just all the things that are going on today where, where, where we can be discipled. So I just pray, God, that you would be in these ministries and that you'd be with those that are sharing and, Father, those that attend. And may we see more and more people, more and more disciples for your kingdom as your people begin to live into the Great Commission. We love you, Father. In your precious name, be with us all, we pray. In his name, amen. Amen.